Hello. So I just recently picked this up. Uh, it's a 1988 Articat Cougar. Uh, the guy said it was a 440, but I couldn't find anything about a 440 Cougar. So it is actually a 500. Uh, it is fan cooled. So it doesn't have any radiator antifreeze. Uh, we have about 7,100 miles on it. And it does not run. Uh, guy said it ran two years ago. He put it away, went to go run it this year and wouldn't start on starting fluid. He checked for spark and had no spark. So who knows what we're going to find. There's a lot going on here. Um, he said that he towed it in an open trailer, which is probably the worst thing you could do. Cause yeah, look at, look at all that down in there. It's pretty crispy. So that'll be addressed. There's all sorts of stuff in here. And otherwise, it's not too bad. I mean, the, the fiberglass, aside from that coming unglued, the headlight's pretty, pretty rough too, but all in all, not bad. The brakes seem to work. So that's good oil injected carbureted you put a new seat cover on it saddlemen it looks like it might need oh uh, yeah something oh yeah look at that now well, something found its way in here that stinks so i wonder if part of our wiring issue is from mice uh, yeah, so that'll snap on that eventually it's a little tight right now but we'll figure it out we'll find something to stuff in here in the meantime this says I'm not sure what that says P and it ends with an R on and off, who knows. Thumb warmer on and off. I'm not sure what that does. You would think it would be a choke, but there's a choke there. To do some research. High beam, low beam, on off. Throttle, that appears to be broken. It'll have to be replaced. No hand warmers, but again, not looking to do any trips with this just kind of mess around so let's uh get it out of the yard and we'll work on getting it in the garage you can address the it's like there's no skegs on it there you have it okay so we're back we're in the garage and uh, just to get things cleaned up in here just so we can work on it a little easier I'm gonna take the exhaust off um, if you guys have never used a uh, an exhaust spring puller best investment ever super easy to use let me show you how I use it basically pull opposite the direction of the spring and everything comes right off. Sure beats using a pair of pliers. So these are the real tough ones, which make this tool even better.
So pulling the seat cover from the foam has shown quite a bit of damage. That was that was brutal. Um, so we'll see what we're gonna do. I've got a buddy who does upholstery work and insisted on making me a new seat cover or I'm sorry seat foam so we'll see I don't know if it's worth it but might as well stop and take a look at see what we can do just amazed at how much water is in this that's kind of a bummer and it's a bunch of junk in there cleaned up pretty nice so that's it must have must have hit something at some point but there is a lot a lot of rust and that could be a reason why we don't have spark so we'll have to trace everything back and see what we can find All right, what I'm going to try to do now is take the uh, kill switch apart, see if there's any connectivity issues with that. Um, and then I noticed too that the brake lever here, when it um, closes, hits the switch. So I don't know if that's just a brake switch or if that is some kind of kill switch that you have to have it open in order to start it with the brake on. But regardless, we'll, uh, we'll start piecing through it, see what we can find and get the multimeter out so one of the things I want to do to make my life a little easier here is pull the dash off this 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 thing was pretty roach that was already cracked he drilled a hole in there and he put some wires on it kind of twisted it this so that screw was already out and then I took one more out rubber piece around the gas cap, hold the gas cap out and figure we'll give it a couple of yanks here and see if we can't get it off. speedometer cable is holding on tight and let the air box out that's pretty good We got a little more room in here now. This is interesting. There's maybe that's the choke I just broke. But there's another choke down there. So now this must be an oil prime or a gas prime. We'll follow that back. It doesn't even work because that's broken. So interesting. But we at least got a view on some of our wires here. We can figure out what what goes what. First thing I'm seeing, I don't know where that goes, if that's even important, but look at that white wire. That thing is all roached up. Let's uh, take a closer look at that one. So those white wires, Red, white, and blue. Not sure where those go yet, but you can get a better picture there of that bad one. I was hoping they'd be connected to the ignition somehow, but they're not. Uh, so those two wires hook into the key. So I'm going to get those off and uh, 
try to bypass that switch, see if that does anything. Okay, so the keyed on-off switch is now going to become a on-off toggle switch because I just pulled that apart. So, let's uh, jump this and see if we get spark. Okay, so we have the switch. Had it jumped. So let's jump it again. We've got a ground onto the spark plug. See if we have some spark. Pulled out the kill switch. No spark. Okay. I'm gonna take this apart now, see if eliminating the connection will make it fire. Okay, still no spark, so rule this out. Let's uh, go back to the kill switch now, pull that apart. So here's the connection for the kill switch. A little corroded. So I'm gonna try starting it without it. Then I'm gonna clean that up and see if that makes a difference and give it a jump. All right, so I just have, I guess a continuity or whatever you call this. So I've got the switch on right now, the kill switch so it is allowing the engine to run and it's got connection and then when I shut it off no longer any connection so we know we know the switch works is it getting past it down there I don't know we'll see all right so we've got the kill switch jumped yep. Got to do the uh, the key still. Okay, keys jumped, kill switch is jumped. Got the plug resting nicely, and we can see it. So let's give it a pull, see what happens. No spark. take the kill switch off see if that does it still nothing all right so i was messing around and ended up taking the fuel tank out it's was held on by a spring and a a fuel line so it just slid right out i'm sure that'll free up much more space so I can see if there's anything else going on that could be giving me all my issues so let's uh let's keep digging so let's try to get to the magneto I'm not exactly sure but I believe to take the recoil starter off because it's, it's back there so you can see where the wires all go into it so let's uh take that off and see what happens well recoil starters off and here's the pulley for the fan i don't know if i needed to do that i'm going to keep on digging see if i can't find a better way to get in there I don't think I have to crack the case, or well, maybe I do. Maybe take it off here and on the back side. So let's see what we can do. Got the coil off now. Uh, one of the things that happened when the coil came off was the wire actually broke off. 
that was there. Uh, so we'll be getting a new coil anyway, but it, uh, who knows what it looks like inside. So I'll be waiting on parts probably now just pull the carbs off there's no way those things are going to be clean i could tell by the the gas that it had been sitting so we've got some downtime waiting for parts to get things moving so we'll uh pull the carbs off next not sure there's any value to taking the engine cover off but i don't know who knows what we're going to find underneath it so might as well take a look very rusty, rusty hardware. And this one there. I got the hardware out that I could, but I think I have to pull the um, intake gaskets there. But at least I got uh, got that one off, and it's a good thing I did because look at that. That's a nice fire hazard. Okay, time for the vacuum again. I took a good look at this and there's really nothing that I can't access. So I'm just gonna put it all back on, but before I do, I'm gonna throw the hardware and some metal rescue. Guess that these are pretty bad and this definitely won't hurt to take the rust off. So we'll come back to that in a day or two. So I ended up doing a little more metal rescue than I expected. All these turned out look pretty good. I'll get them cleaned up in some hot water and see how they turned out. They came out okay. Nothing great, but definitely a huge improvement from where it was. I could probably put a little more effort into these, but it'll be okay for now. Carbs came off. Ran them through ultrasonic cleaner. Um, not too bad. They were I mean, they were pretty bad to begin with, but they look a lot better. Um, floats are. Definitely very free now. A lot of extra parts laying around. So let's get it back together. And there's still, oof. There's a lot of, a lot of junk in there. We'll have to maybe rinse these out one more time. So I was playing with the choke and the one cable wouldn't move when I move a lever and it looks like it came out of that slot right there as you can see so I gotta get some pliers and see if I can stuff it back in there and then close this up ended up being a little more detailed than I expected so there was actually just an, a nail that uh, was holding this in that was bent over so I'm gonna use a 
cotter key, but I actually had to pull this apart. And by doing so, I was able to hook the end of the cable back in. Just have to put the lever back on now, and this will be good as new. This is back on. Good enough. Not going to go anywhere. Uh, these brass pieces look really nice. However, the steel pieces that connect to them that you can adjust do not. So I'm going to run that over a wire wheel real quick. I'm going to stay away from the threaded part because you can see there's a little gasket. And I don't want to destroy that. This is back on. Good enough. Not going to go anywhere. Uh, these brass pieces look really nice. However, the steel pieces that connect to them that you can adjust do not. So I'm going to run that over a wire wheel real quick. I'm going to stay away from the threaded part because you can see there's a little gasket. And I don't want to destroy that. All right. Looking good as new. So we can put this to the side. Um, we're not going to need... See those two. All right, so I basically have this split up into each side of the card. That's for the choke. I'm going to put that to the side. But <coughs> put it back the same way we took it out. Really, anything, anything looked pretty good. Like main jet looked good, idle jet looked good. So that was definitely a win. The gaskets are suspect, but I think they'll be okay. We'll see. Okay, so the carbs are cleaned and back together. All I have to do when I get back is put the fuel line on and then just drop the choke in. It went back pretty good. You can hear the floats are still nice and loose. Um, if we ever get spark, we should be in very good shape. All right, so we're back. It's a new day. Um, I have the new coil new aftermarket coil $19 uh, didn't come with the uh, uh, spark plug boots but have them on the old one so we'll just take them off and screw them on uh, the connections look good so let's get uh, everything switched over and we'll see if we can get a spark out of this these are the NGK basically have a, a thread in there. So I took the boot protector. I guess just puncture that. Screw it in until it stops. It feels pretty good. I, I was going to put some dielectric grease on these, but and that feels pretty, pretty tight, pretty snug. Pull this boot back. Well, this one's different. This one's got some kind of ribs on it. Okay. That looks seated very nicely. Let's get everything plugged in. Obviously, male, female, female, male. Uh, 
you know what I took the pull start off so let's get that back on and then we'll as well just throw this on to do it right hopefully it doesn't have to come off again all right four 10 millimeter bolts I got a nut driver these are easy to know they went here because they have a flathead slot on them I'm assuming that's for something in the in the woods orient this a few ways it looks like this way has the least amount of angularness Nice the previous owner wrote 10 millimeter on there too. Get all four in. Okay, got the pull start back on. That's good. Um, I threw a coat of paint on this after did the rust on it but I'm discovering that the aftermarket is a little too big so uh, I'll have to figure something else out with that but I don't know I don't know yet we'll figure something out but let's let's just gently lay it down there and um, hook a plug up I will move the camera so that we can see if anything happens. Well, let's see if that's enough. All right, so kill switch that's where it needs to be we have the key switch bypassed put the parking brake on and let's give it a pull I don't think I saw anything for the best. Here we go. I can't tell if it's make it spark or not. put the plugs in and then spray a little starting fluid just a little bit see if anything fires off Well, it did not appear to have spark, but guess what? Now we've got spark. That is awesome. That is awesome. So we will, well, let's put everything back on, get everything buttoned up, and especially the exhaust, 
that's kind of a important thing to have. So one of the solutions I have for this, since it doesn't fit in here like that, I think what I'll do is I'll put it on this side, okay, and just get a through bolt, and it'll go through here, and then we'll go right into those threads. I just don't have anything long enough at the house, so I'll have to order something, but I can at least put the rubber bushings back on and get this put back into the the engine there but for now let's try to get everything put back together i know there's a ton of fuel line i have to deal with and um, oil line as well Had a slight camera failure there. So this was covered in rust. I think I could only loosen it so much. So I had to take this off and put it under the wire wheel. Give that a little bit more room to open. A little grease on there might put just a hair around the carb. Make it slide in a little easier. These boots are actually still pretty soft, which is nice, but this carb does not want to go in. There we go. Much smoother that time. So I got to screw that from the other side. These were hard to get off, so I'm going to put just a splash of grease in the threads on the outside, too. There's a lot going on here, but I think this is oriented right. All right, so I got six feet of line. This is a quarter inch inside diameter. I basically measured the uh, the fitting for the fuel, the intake, if you will, um, inlet side, and it was a quarter inch, and then it's got the flare so that it won't pop off. And, and that actually maybe could have gone a little bit smaller, maybe 3 16 but comes with the the clamps on here so that should definitely help ensure it goes nowhere so let's start measuring stuff out and let's get back to uh, basically a brand new fuel system all right little fast forwarding here so we've got the fuel lines hooked up we've got the coil just free floating unfortunately uh, spark plugs are on no belt so it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, the this is my fuel can right here. Well, I had some camera issues, and we're going to fast forward a little bit. So, um, I don't have the fuel tank hooked up right now. I got to get that done. But I ran all new fuel lines. The coil is just kind of sitting over here now i got the air box kind of back on i got the boots i haven't done anything with this yet but uh, plugs carbs i poured a whole bunch of fuel into the 
line and it filled it up pretty good. Um, but I'm missing a spring on this uh, carb choke plunger, maybe. We'll call it the choke plunger. This one has it, so it's pushing it down when the choke is off. So right now it's pushed down. This is, actually it goes up when the choke goes on because it lifts it up. The spring should push it down. So right now, uh, both are down. And now this one is up and that one's down. So uh, that could be a problem, but let's, uh, let's give it a start. all that stuff. We lost a clip on our ignition. Actually, both clips there. That's important. So. All right, we're connected. It's off. Choke is on. So let's give it a pull and see if there's enough fuel in there to get it fired up. Uh, there is no belt on it, so if anything goes crazy, we'll be alright. That's a good start. Good, good, good. Alright, uh... I don't know, take the choke off. So right now we're basically choking one. Well, the camera shut off again. Hopefully it got that, but uh, choke is off now. Let's give it a pull. It's a good start. Let me put the choke back on for now. too bad that is much better than I expected little air bubble in there still but um, that's actually not true fuel that's clots mixed 40 to 1 in the can it's just the smallest one I had to put here but everything is working good um, I have to work on the oil injection still get the primer hooked up but right now, it runs. Love to see how it drives, but uh, no, there's no snow. So, and it's January 9th or 10th, I think. But let's uh, let's wrap this up for part one, and then part two we'll work on getting everything back together. It's not even hot. Amazing. Um, Get the seat going and see what else we can do to spice it up a little bit. So, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in part two. Bye.